the supers in between the S and the A meeting. Today we are going to be talking about our paranormal insurgences. Any point of time where we have interacted with something of the paranormal will be discussed today. And if you have any experiences, comment down below. Now, as you know, Paranormal Girl is very interested in the paranormal. So she has told me to tell you all of her experiences and any that I've had of my own. But I can't remember any of them because my brain has been probed six times. So let's get into it. Paranormal Girl's first experience involved a Bigfoot. Now some of you may not realize this other than by her icon, Paranormal Girl believes in the paranormal. Yes, it's true. But she also believes in Bigfoot and believes that they could have some correlation between Bigfoot and paranormal, that they could be the same. So, she was out with her friend, the friend that happened to also be in a series of unusual questions. That friend and her were going outside. It was a muddy day. They were going outside and a friend was wearing Uggs, so she had to put bags over her shoes. Once they were outside, they started exploring some of the woods. Paranormal dis girl decided not to bring a camera. At the time, it was a bad camera with fuzzy vision and a weird black dot on it. So, it didn't seem quite sensible, but she decided not to, just to get a feel of it before she took it out. Because she wanted to have evidence of anything that happened. That turned out to be a poor choice. As they were outside, they, all, they felt on edge. They didn't feel okay. They felt unsafe. As they continued, they noticed a place that could have made suitable for a bed for a Bigfoot. Yes, they can make beds. Watch my new Bigfoot and I'll explain it. As they continued onwards, things just got weird. Paranormal Girl got hit in the foot with a piece of a tree, I guess. It was like a branch, but it was smaller and only about this wide. I mean, circularly around. As they were walking, it hit her in the foot and she told her friend. Her friend and her were both weirded out by the fact that it hit her with enough force to seem like it had been thrown at her, not simply fallen for how it hit her. And with the amount of force, it was not enough to bump up and hit her. It hit her like it had been thrown, but not hard enough to injure her. As they were continuing, something that paranormal, paranormal Girl's friend would not reveal until later on, she got hit in the back with a rock. She didn't want to tell her, she did not want to tell Paranormal Girl for fear of scaring her. And as they continued onward, something hit the tree that would happen to be nearby, causing it, causing a piece of branch to fall nearby, aka about ten feet in front of them. They were confused because it was not breezy and it sounded like something hit the tree causing the branch to fall. As they continued onwards, they started to notice what might have been slight growling in the distance. It freaked them out. As they continued forward, Paranormal Girl something, saw something far in the distance. It was, a, it was too far to see much definition, but she could make out the fact that it had two yellow eyes and it was mostly black. But she didn't see much of it because it was quick and it wasn't very visible. They got very scared at that point. They got so scared that they were going to run, but Paranormal Girl did not understand petrified with fear before this day. She couldn't run for the life of her. She froze, but they both freaked out, and eventually she was able to get herself to run. Once they had broken open into the clearing, they were still running, fearing for their lives, even though Bigfoot's hair are not hostile and would not have hurt, hurting them without having valid reasoning, like any normal human should feel, don't harm without very good reasoning, such as you are personally being harmed, or you are in grave danger. As they were running, they were running through a lot of mud. Paranormal Girl took the lead as her friend behind her was falling behind because of the bags on her feet. She stopped halfway to the house in the clearing, turning around yelling at her friend to run. And she said, I can't, the bag, so I'm interfering. And she told her, just run. It's not worth it. Eventually, they both ran inside. There happened to be a bell on the side of the house, and Paranormal Girl found it necessary to ring it in victory. 
But as she returned back inside, she realized, I should have brought my camera. They were debating later. La la they were debating whether or not to go back outside later on. But they noticed that there was no moon that night, and that would have been very stupid because there were coyotes. So they decided not to go back out to investigate. When they went back out the next day, they found nothing. They, could, they had no experiences, and they did not feel agitated like they did before. So that was her experience with Bigfoot. Now for her experience with ghosts. So, some of you may not believe in ghosts. Why are you at this channel? That's okay if you don't. But, she actually, it was in the, in the Ghost Adventures video when she went to a haunted jam. While she was there, the camera ran out of battery surprisingly fast, which could be justified as the fact that it was a bad battery and the camera does have a habit of not being able to retain its battery well. But we're not sure because she claims to have seen it at three bars when she turned it on. We don't know. For 100% sure. But she turned it off because lack of battery and she feared to be running out of space and her camera stopped recording on her. Luckily, it stopped recording at a good time. But it stopped recording on her. And later on, she would not be able to get it to record again until later. But they continued looking around throughout the different jail cells. And as Paranormal Girl leaned into the haunted jail cell, one thing that, that she had been told was that people felt like somebody was standing behind them or pushing them. When she leaned into the cell, she felt somebody behind her. She whipped around. Nobody was there. No one was even remotely behind her, which she had expected to see. Creepy, right? And her grandmother actually managed to capture a picture. I... And behind her, it looks like there may be a weird glare standing behind her. According to her grandmother, that picture was taken moments before she turned around to find nothing behind her. Could it have been George? Could it have been Placebo? We may never know, but there may be another visit happening soon to that haunted jail. Another experience. I don't know what girl claims to have had, is that once, this is a short one, she was in her kitchen. She went downstairs and put some pop popcorn in the microwave. She walked out and came back in when it was beeping and done, and she could have sworn one of the cupboards were open that weren't open before, and it wasn't one that she had had any interaction with prior. Suspicious? Maybe. There's also been experiences. The paranormal girl has not been one for night terrors, and night terrors are affiliated with the paranormal and ghosts because they can cause those things, but she has had two experiences that could be considered pretty scary. One experience was she could not remember if it was a dream or not, but she remembered, remembered feeling such terror inside of her, such fear, that she remembered seeing a ghost girl standing right in front of her. The thing is, is that her bed is the top bunk at that time, so nobody could have been standing in front of her. She remembered feeling that imminent fear and seeing the girl with darkness all around her, and the girl seemed to be glowing. It was a very typical story of a ghost, so, or a dip typical description of a ghost, so it didn't make sense for there to be no glow emitting into the room at all. So as she, the imminent, imminent terror as she saw the girl and everything went black. She believed that she woke up at least an hour later after the experience. So she does not know if that was a dream or what she had seen in real life, but the terror she felt was all too real. Another instance was after a not so scary nightmare that just happened to freak her out because she was almost eaten alive by a hippopotamus. When she opened her eyes, all she saw were faces, various types of faces, doll faces, cracked faces, glowing faces. She couldn't do anything to help it. She blinked her eyes and nothing changed. It's, it most likely was not sleep paralysis because she was in full control of her body and was able to turn over to the side, continuing to see the faces. After blinking enough times, the faces did disappear. But why she saw them when she was awake, no one knows. Another experience happened to be with somebody very near to Paranormal Girl, a.k.a. her neighbor. They told her this story the day after they said it happened. They said they saw two Bigfoots out in the backyard. They said they said they saw one. One was tall and one was shorter, making her believe that these were a parent and a child. They said that they were standing in the backyard for a couple of seconds, jumped over the fence with ease, and ran off towards the woods nearby. 
suspicious thing the paranormal girl found was that there was a wet spot on a piece of wood. It had rained the night before and it was muddy. The wet spot was in a general shape of a foot, but the wood had absorbed it, so it was much larger than it could have possibly ever been. So, it could have been a footprint that had, absor that had absorbed into the wood later on. Also, even though how weird it may sound, paranormal girl smelled the wood of the fence nearby and got a pretty unpleasant smell meter nose. And if you don't know this about Bigfoots, they smell pretty bad. Another experience of paranormal girl with, the, with Bigfoots was actually in an investigation in her own backyard. Now this has happened multiple times where she had been looking through and found that some stuff had mysteriously changed and a hammock did break on her belief of it being a Bigfoot possibly breaking it because it looked like it had broken over too much weight and Bigfoot's not exactly the lightest animal in the world but she was in her backyard and she was doing calls and stuff and she was getting a lot of responses and then it stopped after something happened to come in and mess it up what happened after that was nothing at all but they don't know if they can believe that it was really a Bigfoot that was responding to them because they had no sight of it and they never left their backyard which could have been suspicious so, she still remains skeptical of whether this was a true experience or not. But she has found large footprints in her backyard before, and deers have been there too. So, it's not an unlikely place for a Bigfoot to inhabit. Also, an experience of a relative of paranormal girls was that they were going home from a family meet somewhere else near that was much more heavily wooded. They said that on the, while they were driving home, they heard a large, large they heard a loud howl somewhere up the hill. They saw nothing, but they know that they heard something suspicious. Could it have been a Bigfoot? Could it have been a coyote? Who knows what it could have been, but it was definitely something. Paranormal Girl has told me no other experiences that could have possibly have happened to her, so that concludes her stories. My stories happen to be none because, well, I've been probed, so I don't remember. And that concludes our meeting of Air of National Aliens Su So Super Awesome Club Disassembles. If you want to see more National Aliens Super So Awesome Club, slap that like button, subscribe, hit the bell of beast wall, and comment down below telling us that you want more or telling us of your own paranormal experiences so that I can share them with the world. That concludes this meeting. I hope I see you in the next one.